Hello everyone and welcome back to the second Switzerland Dev Diary for Hearts of Iron 4, talking about the alternative history paths and the alternate ways you can play Switzerland in the new DLC. Following in the footsteps of last week's Dev Diary talking about Italy and its potential to form Great Italy and Rome, this week we're looking at Switzerland's ability to form such things as the Alpine Confederation. Let's have a look. This week's Dev Diary begins with a brief glimpse at what the late game could look like for one version of a Switzerland's campaign in the form of the Alpine Confederation. The year is 1944, you find yourself in the middle of a war against France. The Alpine Confederation owns Austria, as well as parts of northern Italy and France, and is making good pushes west. We also see what it looks like to be controlling one of these nations, and what the flag of such a confederation would look like in the top left with that blue and white alteration. Looking pretty cool. But bringing it back to the normal dev diary, we can begin by looking at what we saw last week, which is the beginning of the Switzerland's focus tree, and how the first focus is Swiss guiding principles. From there, even if you're going historical, you'll have to, have to take the first four focuses that will lead you down, but then you get to choose whether you're going to go left or right. So, when you take Swiss Guiding Principles, an event will pop up, like the one you see here, which will let you decide which way you want your balance of power to tick. This will basically focus on whether you want more of a centralised Swiss Confederation or a decentralised Confederation. So this is a pretty important change you're going to have to decide right at the start. That being said, whether you choose to go down the path of centralization, decentralization, or keeping things neutral, you still have the option to choose your direction later on. This isn't locked in from the first focus, it's just going to help you push it in a certain direction. If you manage to keep the Canton's power kind of stable and not too dramatically changing, you can move down the centre of the focus tree while moving slightly to the right towards the Federal Police Intelligence Department. This branch will be important because it gives you focuses such as crack down on distance or expand the Federal Police Intelligence, which should make it easier to occupy territories that you've taken, as well as giving you some better things for your operatives. This will eventually lead down to martial law and a shared military sub-branch with the fascist path, but you don't have to go fascist to get the sub-branch, you can get it whichever way you're going, but you know, it's there to share. We also see Crackdown on Descent giving some massive division org. Um, we do like org in this version of Hoy, I've noted. We do like our organisation. But eventually, whether or not you've decided to kind of ride the middle of the line and try and get those nice little buffs in the centre path, you'll have to decide whether you're going to go with the more left path or the more right path. The left path is talking about Allied Gold, Gotthardbund, and Press for Vorlberg. So the foundation of starting this one off is you're going after Vorlberg, which is a small little canton area, which is inside Austria, which had a small referendum to decide whether it wanted to become part of Switzerland. They did want to become part of Switzerland, but neither Austria or Switzerland wanted them to become part of Switzerland, so nothing ever came of it. Because this is all history, you are going to make something of it, and try and make Vorlberg a canton. In this image here, we see the Swiss Confederation wants Vorlberg as a canton, which I think is going to be you as either Austria or Germany, but considering it says Gains Conquer Focus on Austria, I'm, you're probably playing as Austria, and that means that you have the choice to either give them over, or say no, and Switzerland gets a Conquer Focus against you, which is probably going to involve some nightmarish combat along the Alps. Oh, please God, no. At this point, I've decided to skip ahead slightly to show you what the full focus tree path would look like for the Gotthard Bund section of the tree, to make talking about it slightly easier. So as you can see, we began by trying to press for Vorlberg, which is the foundation of the Gotthard Bund, and then we have some choices to do, such as preempting the Anschluss, or going down this path, which is slightly less aggressive, and then on the right, we also have some decisions regarding our combats and eventually getting a navy, assuming you can get a coast. So, following down the path of preempting the Anschluss, well, it's going to involve you trying to stop the Anschluss by hopefully allowing Switzerland to annex Austria, if Austria is so kind. You do also get claims to Austria, which means holding the territory isn't going to be so damning for your garrison and supply, although getting those focuses we saw earlier about garrison and such is probably going to be more helpful. As you push further down, you have some focuses to demand different territory from France, Germany and Italy, and if they say no, 
Well, you're probably going to war and you're going to have to start empire building. So good luck with your Alpine empire. On the flip side though, maybe preempting the Anschluss is a little bit too dramatic for you. And in that sense, we have the new Eidgenossenschaft, probably said wrong, which allows you to have decisions to ask surrounding territories to hold what I think are mini little state referendums to decide whether or not they're going to become part of your empire. At the end of the day though, it will come down to whether that particular nation is willing to give over the territory, and I'm going to assume the more you try and take from them, the less happy they're going to be about it. So um, probably be very cautious about which territory you're taking and who you're taking it from. In this image, of course, we can see the little 50 political power decisions with a 50-50 chance of making sure they come in or don't come in, as well as a 250 political power decision, which I think is going to decide whether or not you go to war with France. So that could be a pretty big one all in all. It's a lot of political power. So when I showed off the focus tree earlier, we saw that on the left was the political decisions and on the right was a sort of military and navy tree branch. And that's what we're gonna have a look at now. So the initial choice is gonna be between Switzerland on the offense or the defense. And if you choose Switzerland on the offense, you get some army experience, command power, as well as the ability to change the Swiss citizen militia into regular infantry divisions. The militia is a concept they've talked about in previous dev diaries. They're a new kind of division template, which for the most part isn't really going to be changeable. They're kind of fixed divisions. In some ways then, I feel like Switzerland on the offense is taking the civilian based militia and effectively just conscripting them into normal soldiers. <laughs> it's basically a conscription law, right? No? Maybe. So if you're not going down the Switzerland on the offense section, you could go on the neutral entente focus, which will allow you to invite other neutral and non-aligned countries to your faction. It's interesting that your choice is either between getting a proper operational army or relying on other countries to come help you. So regardless of which path you've taken, whether you've denied the Anschluss, whether you've built up a faction, whether you've tried to modernize your army or whatever you've done, you can eventually get down the path of trying to find Switzerland's best guy, their main guy, Henri Guisson. Using his power, it's kind of difficult to decide what exactly the dev diary is describing him as doing, because there's discussions about him not being particularly happy with a Swiss empire, and more so wanting to ensure that the democratic, or at least neutrality, uh, traditional foundation of Switzerland is preserved. And they also talk about a potential coup in the form of Cincinnatus, the Roman general who came, fixed everything, and then went home again, <laughs> who's kind of revered. So I'm wondering if you get to the bottom of the tree, you have the option to effectively turn your gigantic expansive empire into Italy, Germany, and France, and Austria into the traditional Switzerland it was when the game first started. Considering there's a focus called Return to Old Switzerland, I'm going to assume that is exactly what his intention is. Um, so yeah, I guess the campaign kind of ends after that. So taking a brief look at the full focus tree, I know it's a weird time to be doing this, but I think it's important we do this. We just saw this section of the focus tree over here, which was the annexing Austria and forming that large empire. And next up, we're going to be talking about this section, which is going to be the former Switzerland that remains democratic, but perhaps takes a more invested interest in helping the allies in some manner. This can be seen by beginning down the path of closer democratic ties. And then you have three different ways in which you can eventually join the war. You can connect the Maginot Line to France and then hopefully join France with whatever they're doing. You can kind of join the allies in a more traditional way, or you can form a secret pact with the allies. Choosing to join France will eventually lead you to become a puppet of the French, forming the Second Helvetic Republic as a successor state to the Napoleonic Republic. Becoming a puppet does suck, but the focus below it, Alpine Aspirations, allows you to get some cause that once the war is over and done, i.e. you've capitulated Germany, you should be able to make a claim to owning Austria, and you have effectively become the democratic controller of Austria in a post-World War II Yalta world. The middle one, Join the Allies, is pretty much what it says on the tin. You, um, you join the, the Allies. Y yeah. And then the last one, the secret pact with the Allies, is less so about 
joining the war upfront, but helping them without necessarily directly involving yourself, because should France fall, and France will never fall, the Maginot Line's too strong, but if it did fall, you probably don't want to be invaded by Germany and Italy, so a, a secret pact is perhaps in your best interest. The Dev Diary splits up here and talks about a separate part of the focus tree under the Burehaar Har branch, so we're going to have a quick look where that is. So as we can see in this image, which I've had to go back to, you can see that the secret pact with the Allies, while it does come down this espionage branch, it's also connected to Burehaar, following down here, banning the national movement and then seeking allied trade. You have to get both sides of this tree to get down to the secret pact. But in doing so, you will end up getting an extra operative slot, as well as eventually the intelligence support buff, which gives you some good uh, buffs to ensuring the resistance in your country, propaganda missions for affecting what I think is stability, and intel network strength game, as well as how much assets you can get from infiltrated operatives. The more you invest into your secret operation program, you can also unlock some decisions for political power to exchange your information you've got from the country in exchange for experience in army, navy, air, and some command power. But it's not the end of the world because at the very bottom of the tree is the jump into action focus, which will let you join the war as you may have wanted to. So in the end, don't worry, there is a go to war eventual button. So we've seen the left side of the tree was talking about different ways that Switzerland may try and preserve some of its neutrality or democracy and particularly have focuses going to war with either Germany, Italy or France, less so France, but Germany and Italy definitely. Well, the right side of the tree is going to be focused less so on going to war with Germany and if nothing else, working alongside them or just trying to preserve yourself with them. Because Switzerland didn't have too much of a fascist movement during this time period, the focus tree won't have a great, massive fascist party that you have to get in power, but more so working alongside things as they talk about going forward. We begin by going down this path with actual historical things that did happen, such as purchasing German planes, banning the Swiss Communist Party, withdrawing from the League of Nations. These things did happen, but none of them were so impactful that they caused a ripple in the democratic institutions of Switzerland. Because this is the old history path, however, they will do exactly that. Following down the path of taking these focuses here, you will eventually find yourself having to infiltrate federal police until eventually getting closer ties with the German Reich and then abandoning neutrality in its entirety. Everything up here does not necessarily push you into some great old history path, but will eventually, as you take different things, get you to closer ties with the German Reich. And once you've abandoned neutrality, that's when your big choice begins. We can also see from earlier that the semi-historical choice you had earlier about getting down to this military branch is still available. So whether you've gone down here or down here, you can still get to this part. So once you did eventually do all of those semi-historical, semi-unhistorical focuses, you'll have to decide on who your leader is going to be. Your two options are Robert Tobler, who I think was an actual member of the Swiss Fascist Party, uh, perhaps the only one, and Rolf Hen, or Henner. Both options in general will involve you moving towards a more fascist path, but if you're going down the Tobler path, you're going to be working more so towards joining Germany, while if you go down the Hen path, you're working towards a more independent path for Switzerland. As we see with Hen's path, we have the Request Austrian Occupation moving towards the bottom, which allows you to request Germany to give you parts of Austria, but also become a German puppet. I guess the difference is, is in one path you're becoming an ally and trying to claim your stake through normal combat, and the other one, similar to how it worked with the Second Helvetic Republic with France, you become a puppet, but then use that excuse to ask for territory from your ruler. Finally, moving towards the bottom of the focus tree, we talk about the final little military aspect we saw earlier, which has you the ability to convert your militias into professional soldiers, as well as the shared branch having the option to get mountaineer paratroopers, which is going to be a mix of uh, paratroopers getting the bonuses that mountaineers have. The last thing to note is that in no circumstance will any of the focus tree paths require you to go down a civil war path. 
everything is a peaceful ticking over time and eventually converting the nation. Uh, the nation, the reasonings they had is Switzerland is mountains and that is a nightmare to play with. Um, a lot of Switzerland involves building fortifications and not necessarily fighting in those fortifications. You're building them up and that's just going to slow things down because of all the forts. And Switzerland is already so small that a civil war is probably not going to be so interesting. But all in all, that's everything they've got for us this time in regards to their Switzerland focus tree. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to briefly talk about some things I'm thinking. In general, this dev diary was very fragmented. I feel like different parts of the focus tree are very much so layered in different locations. So it probably came across as quite hard to follow. But I think when you're playing it, it hopefully will be more logical in what you can and can't do. I'm getting flashbacks to how Mexico, there's like a left side and a right side, and sometimes they overlap, like if you go down the middle of the branch, you head at the left. But in general, it probably is going to work out. Now maybe I'm foolish, or I wasn't paying attention, but do you remember there being anything to do with communism here? Like anything at all? There is no communist branch, period. I'm just interested by the lack of a communist branch. It's interesting that there is a specific focus towards banning the communist party, yet the communist party doesn't seem to care. I guess they they, they just leave and <laughs> they're okay with it. Um, so yeah, in the sense that there's going to be um, no democratic path for Russia, there is no communist path for Switzerland. Tit for tat. And of course, most disappointingly, there was no discussions of an independent Vorlberg. Where is our Vorlberg micronation? That's the real question. That's what we, that's what thousands of people were asking for. Where's the micronation Vorlberg? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Um, thank you very much for listening. I hope this was somewhat followable. Next time, we're going to be talking about Ethiopia and their alternative history. Goodness knows what that's going to involve. Um, a great Ethiopian empire. Beta Israel, what, going to Jerusalem maybe? Um, what else? Maybe just going all the way to Italy and conquering Rome. Maybe that's the real end goal. I don't know. I guess we'll find out another time. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked, feel free to like. Feel free to subscribe. And um, stay neutral. Where's the Switzerland becomes Burgundy path. Bye.